Joining us now is Siv Jensen. She is the leader of the Progress Party of Norway, which is the number one opposition party in Norway. And we welcome you here to TVO and to Canada. Thank you so much. First obvious question is, we don't, we don't get many Norwegian politicians <laughs> coming to Canada. What are you doing here? Well, actually, I came over to attend the, the conference on um, fighting anti-Semitism in Ottawa. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what brought you to town. Well, that's and to visit with uh, some of your uh, great politicians. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time with Senator Linda Frum. Uh, she's, uh, she's a really good politician, I she's think. She's only been a politician for about a year, you know. Yeah, but she is a strong woman. You should have more of them. <laughs> well, we're going to get to that, actually, mm. but we have very, not too many women in politics in this country. Let's learn a little bit more about you, though. You led the Progress Party, which is a conservative party, like Linda Frum's party, into the last Norwegian election about a year ago. Yeah. How'd you do? We did very well. We ended as the uh, second biggest party in Norway. Um, you have to remember, we have seven parties in parliament for the time being. So we uh, had about 25% of the votes, which is quite good. Uh, now we have extremely good polls, uh, um, which means that if, we, we, if the polls uh, remain that way, we will be able to form a majority government with the Conservative Party in Norway after the next elections. We have the impression, I think, in Canada that all of the Scandinavian countries are blissfully, happily, socially democratic. Mm. And of course, we have a party here in Canada, the New Democratic Party, which often looks at Sweden or Norway or Finland and says, look how wonderfully they're doing over there, mm. and we need to be more like them. Do you want to give us uh, some advice on how true that is? Mm. Well, it's not all that true, and I think that uh, you should take a closer look before you buy the whole idea of uh, the beautiful countries in, the, in, the Nor in, in, in Scandinavia. Well, first of all, Denmark has um, been governed by a um, conservative government now for many, many years, so it's not a social democratic country anymore. Sweden is in their second term with a, a conservative government. So the only remaining socialist country for now is Norway. Um, of course, we do have a lot of money, but um, it's not very efficient run. Uh, we can lean back for now because we do have all this oil money coming in. But we need to do something about uh, fast-growing bureaucracy, which is extremely expensive for the taxpayers. We have high uh, tax rates. Um, and most things are tax-funded in Norway, which means that you basically need to get in um, some post on the budget in order to, um, not to make it. And I think that's a bad idea. But I'm looking for evidence that people have tired of the social democratic way of life. And I look at your party, the Progress Party. Mm -hmm. You've never won an election. No, but we are also the newest party in Norway. But, well, um, new is how old, though? Uh, close to 40 years. 40 years? You've been yeah. around for 40 years and never won an election. Yeah, but we will now. <laughs> she we says confidently. Now, yeah. Uh huh. Uh, you talked taxes a second ago. Mm. Um, what's the average income tax? In do you have a progressive income tax system? Yes, we do. And so the rates are roughly uh, from what to what? Well, on in uh, income, it's uh, on the average, I guess, uh, close to 50%. But then we have um, a severe amount of indirect taxes, which means that basically you pay around 70% of your income, one way or another, uh, to the government. 70% of your income yeah. through direct and indirect taxation yes. goes to the government. Yeah. And you think that's too high? Of course it is. Well, you say of course, but you know, the people haven't elected you yet, so they seem to be content with it. No, they're not. Uh, both uh, my party and the Conservative Party really wants to cut taxes. Uh, and that has to do with having a stronger belief in the individual. I think that you can get uh, better economic growth, more solid businesses, um, more sustainable economy over time if you have more trust in the individual, more trust in the businesses, uh, even more trust in the NGOs to handle their affairs without government interference. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Yeah. Ronald Reagan was your favorite president. Yeah, he was. Margaret Thatcher was your favorite British Prime Minister. Yes, she was. Yes, okay. So I'm, we're, I'm trying to paint a picture for our viewers here so they know where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. When you hear about Norway over here, whether it's from the United Nations or other independent organizations, mm. it's almost always at the top of the list or near the top of the list of countries that do well on the issues of fairness, equity, lifestyle, health care, education. Mm. It doesn't sound as you know, bleak as the picture I think you're suggesting here. Have we got the wrong impression of your country? No. First of all, let me say that Norway is a very good place to live. We all enjoy it very much. It's safe and it's sound and it's, uh, we have a solid economy by all means. But things can get better. Uh, we need to make a serious health reform because, we, I mean, we have a uh, state monopoly a healthcare system uh, and it's not very efficient run. It's very um, uh, expensive. 
and we do have uh, almost a quarter of a million people waiting to get an operation, which means that they're unable to work because they wait uh, to get this uh, necessary operation. That's just ri ridiculous. I mean, you can actually change the system, and in every um, um, other um, part of the society where we actually make markets work, uh, they do make um, things work better. Prices uh, are cut, and the, the customer or the consumer is more happy. So that's why we have to introduce markets to the healthcare system as well. We talk about this in Canada all the time, mm. and the notion of talking about patients as customers or consumers is dangerous talk in Canada. A lot why? of people find that because buying a widget or buying a magazine is not the same thing as buying a, a you know heart bypass surgery. That's no. the argument. Well. Uh, this actually, we have a different debate in Norway. It's about your right as a patient, your right as a consumer, to make decisions on your health. Okay, let me ask you about Norway's relationship with many uh, other countries in the world and, and other religions in the world. And um, to that end, I want to ask, how homogeneous a population is Norway? Well, um, it's not very homogeneous anymore. It used to be, but of course we as any other European or uh, Western country have a growing uh, immigrant population. Uh, that, of course, is not a problem, uh, as long as they get well integrated, get to work every day, and take care of their own business. I think the growing problem in Norway is the lack of integrity. We don't make um, immigrants integrate that well, uh, and we do have a serious amount of um, illegal immigrants trying to get into Norway. That creates a lot of problems. How about Islam? Does Norway have a problem with Islam right now? <laughs> Well, what is Islam? Um, I think we should talk about radical Islam because that's the main threat if to the world. If you want to make that distinction, for sure. Well, for me it is important because I don't think that we should go after any Muslim in this world just because of their faith. Uh, I believe in the uh, freedom of um, uh, believing in whatever you want. So I'm not going to go after anyone for having their uh, beliefs. Uh, what I do think is disturbing is that radical Islam is not religion, it's politics. Uh, and it's actually a movement um, spreading uh, hatred, uh, trying to suppress women. Uh, and I live in a country where gender equality is uh, well, close to perfect. Uh, we have uh, women in all parts of society, in politics, in businesses, and everywhere. But we experience today that young women with, um, with Muslim background um, are forced into marriages. They uh, experience forced circumcision. Um, they are um, um, threatened in their everyday life. Well, that's what I'm asking you about. Take, mm. take radical Islam off the table for a second. D does the average Muslim in Norway um, embrace Norwegian values, traditional Norwegian values, in a way that you would like to see? I think the average Muslim is embracing them, yes. And that's why they came to Norway initially, to live as a free individual in a, a free part of the world. They have actually run away from suppression. Uh, the problem is that somebody is running after them again, uh, and they, fortunately, some of them are actually standing up, uh, talking about it, and I think that has created a uh, very good climate in Norway, debating these very sensitive and delicate issues, because they are, uh, if not handled correctly. Well, I, I don't have to tell you, but obviously in your European backyard, in other countries, uh, there are significant tensions right now between, you know, the ethnicities of the people who've yes. lived there for centuries and new Muslims who've come in and you know, aren't adapting as well as, say, the people who've lived there for a long time would like. Norway is overwhelmingly a Christian country. Yes. Are there tensions between Christianity and Islam in Norway? Yes, we, we see a uh, tendency uh, of uh, increased conflict, but I think the basic conflict line that we have has to do with radical Islam, uh, Islamic groups uh, putting forward some strange ideas into the Norwegian society, um, uh, and we have to fight that. Secondly, the, the other problem that we have has to do with integration. Uh, but apart from that, I think that uh, we're doing quite well. You've got 500 troops in Afghanistan. Yes. So uh, again, I wonder whether or not you're concerned about being a target of terrorism. Canada's been mentioned, for example, in Osama bin Laden's tapes because mm -hmm. we're over there. Yeah. Uh, d is that a concern for Norwegians? Of course it is. I mean, we have been mentioned as well in these famous tapes. Uh, but. If we step out of Afghanistan in fear of what might happen, I think that we, we lose no matter what. This is a freedom fight, uh, the way I see it, and we need to stand shoulder by shoulder as NATO alliance uh, to fight one of the most important fights in modern history, I think. 
Let's finish up on uh, something that will be obvious to anybody watching this. You're a woman in politics. Mm -hmm. We have, I think, in our National House of Commons, 21 or 22 percent of the members of Parliament are female. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty low number. Um, we've had a female Prime Minister for about five months, <laughs> yeah. 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Britain's had one Prime Minister who's female. The United States has never had a female president. Uh, female leadership is not uncommon in Scandinavian countries, no. right? No, it's very common. Very common. Yes. So, it, having said that, is it harder for a woman to become Prime Minister in your country than for a man to become Prime Minister? No, not at all. Uh, first of all, we had our first um, female uh, Prime Minister uh, back in the 80s. And she was our Prime Minister for quite some time. She was from the Labour Party. Um, Today, five out of seven parties have a female leader. I think close to 40% of our parliament is uh, women. They are women. Uh, so we don't have a debate uh, on that at all when it comes to politics. We can debate it in other parts of the society, but in politics, people are very, very uh, used to it. What are you doing that we're obviously not doing? I have no idea. Well, That's somehow, uh, <laughs> whatever barriers there are to women wanting to get into public life, and there are plenty, mm. you seem to have overcome them more than we have. Any thoughts about what those are? Well, I, I have given some thought to the fact that US, for instance, haven't had a, a female president at all, and I wonder why, uh, whereas we have a totally different situation in Scandinavia. Uh, first of all, I think it has to do with uh, getting people used to the idea. And that means that women need to get involved. They need to be elected, they need to be members of parliament, they need to be uh, in Congress or senators or whatever, and uh, take a stand, um, be loud and clear, and uh, show people that they can be trusted. But maybe it is, I don't know. In Norway, um, because of the gender equality that we've had for a long time, um, it's not a drawback to be a woman. In Norway, we have a system where the so-called maternity leave, which is uh, a state-funded system is actually uh, equally shared or close to equally shared between, uh, between the mom and the dad, or they can actually choose how they want to uh, separate it, which means that more and more men actually take leave from work to stay at home with their children when they grow up. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something to think about. Okay, mm. we're thinking about it. When's your next election? We have local elections next year. I and mean, then we national have, elections. Yeah, we have uh, parliamentary elections in 2013. 2013. Yeah. And you'll be on the ballot for the Progress Party running to be Prime Minister. I will. And how many seats behind the government are you now? Uh, well, we would have to form a coalition because we haven't had a single party in majority for a long time in Norway. Okay, but so if you and the Conservatives form some kind of coalition. Mm -hmm. Well, all polls today gives us a strong majority. Elections so not today. I know, <laughs> but the only way to find that out is to fight every day until 2013. Uh, we will stay tuned and I hope you'll come back and visit us in Canada again sometime. Steve Jensen, thank you so much. Thank you.